Most people believe that the first time they met Larry, Larry and Magic was the 1979 NCAA championship, but you write in your book that that's not the case. No, it wasn't actually. In, uh, the, year, the, the summer before that, they both played on an all-star team that was a, a classic made-for-television event. Um, it was called the WIT, the World Invitational Tournament, and what it was was a group of college all-stars playing international teams. Well, they picked um, Joe B. Hall, the Kentucky coach, to be the coach of that team because his Kentucky team had just won the national championship just days before that. So Joe B. Hall picked his team and of course picked five of his own players and then Dave Gavitt and some others filled in some of the other players. Larry Bird got chosen, Irvin Johnson got chosen, Darrell Griffith, Thurl Bailey, James Bailey, some big names um, in, in college basketball. Sidney Moncrief was on the team. So Irvin and, and, and Larry met for the first time at that event and uh, but barely spoke to one another. As, again, typical Larry. Larry would get on the bus and say hello and nothing else. Irvin would get on the bus with his boom box, dancing. He was the youngest player on the team, but clearly the most precocious nonetheless. Now, as Magic put it, Larry and Magic uh, dominated and embarrassed mm -hmm. the starters during practices, but why mm -hmm. were they relegated to the bench during games then? Well, you know, it's interesting. Joe B. Hall just was convinced that his Kentucky team, they had just won the championship, they were the best players. And it didn't matter that in practice, Larry and Magic were really embarrassing some of those starters, uh, Kyle Macy and Rick Roby to be specific, those two players in particular. And uh, they would kill them in practice, and yet when the starting lineup came out, Macy and Roby's name was, were always written in, and it used to really frost Larry in particular. He was really ticked off, but he figured, well, you know what, the heck with this guy, I'm just going to have my fun in practice. So that's what they had to settle for. How did current Boston Globe columnist Bob Bryan get Larry on that team, or what was the connection? There? Well, you know, it was funny. Larry was playing for Indiana State and, of course, putting up big, big, big numbers back then. And, uh, but remember, this, isn't, this is the year before the national championship, the undefeated season. So people are paying attention, but not really because they, they figured that conference that Indiana State played in wasn't a very big conference. But Ryan's a, a basketball genius an aficionado, and he knew better, and he kept hearing from the Celtics about this kid, Larry Bird. So when he was covering the NCAA tournament uh, nearby, he took a drive out to Indiana State and watched them play in the NIT. He watched Larry Bird play for three minutes and said, oh my God, this guy's unbelievable. Now the funny part is, most of the rest of the country thought Larry Bird was African American because they'd never seen him play on TV. He was never on television. And what was the Boston connection to that tournament? The Boston connection, well, Larry, uh, Red Arback showed up at that tournament and uh, he was walking down the steps and the players were walking up the steps and Michael Korn nudged Larry Bird and said, wow, look, look, there's Red. And Larry said, Red who? And he said, that's Red Arbach, he's the president of the Celtics. Larry said, oh, okay, whatever. But Larry didn't realize was Red was there to see him play. Never knew it. Didn't know who Red Arbach was. Larry didn't know anybody outside of French Lick. Now, it could have happened that Larry and Magic would have played together on the same college team. We all know how Larry left Indiana 24 days after right. starting, but how did Bobby Knight lose Magic, too? Well, I'm not sure if Bobby Knight lost Magic. Uh, Magic might have lost Bobby Knight. Uh, you know, Bobby Knight did want to come talk to Irvin, uh, came to his high school, told his, his high school coach, I'll be there at, I think he told him, 2 o'clock, and of course showed up at 1 o'clock and started roaming the halls, and he wanted to see Irvin Johnson in his own setting and watch this this kid who was supposed to be this great player and what he saw was a Pied Piper, all the kids following him and you know really agile, you know, a lot of adulation going on in the hallways but clearly could see that Irvin was a leader, a born leader. So they get them to sit down in the, uh, the cafeteria and Irvin's a nervous wreck, okay, because he's seen this guy on TV crazy going, yelling, screaming at everybody, throwing stuff and he was nervous about meeting Coach Knight. But the Coach Knight that showed up at his high school was affable and friendly and funny and went out of his way to make both Irvin and his high school coach feel very, very comfortable. George Fox re remarked later he couldn't believe how nice he was. So they were sitting there talking very amiably with, with each other and a lot, lot of small talk. And then finally, uh, Bobby Knight's tone changed immediately and said, OK, Irvin, where the hell are you going to school? So this caught both uh, Magic and his coach a little, he you know, wasn't really prepared for that. And you know, Irvin told him the truth. He said, you know, coach, I don't know if I can play for you. I, 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 I see you screaming at those other players. and." I don't know if that's really what I want. I don't, I don't know if that's something I can handle. So Knight kind of looked at him a little bit and cocked his head and straightened out his uh, shirt, stood up, shook the coach's hand, and left. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. Thank you.